Hello. Is it on? Hello, everyone. Welcome to Center for Science and Environment uh, event. This is the release of our latest publication that celebrates the links between food and biodiversity. Taste is the fourth book in the first food series. And we, uh, the first one came out in 2013. That was the taste of India's biodiversity. And that explored the links between food and the environment. The second book, Culture of Taste, was on uh, was to celebrate the knowledge and wisdom that local communities have about the biodiversity around them and how it can be used to create food uh, that sustain people. The third book, Business of Taste, was about the links between biodiversity, uh, nature, and the livelihood potential that th uh, these biodiverse foods have. The fourth book which we are releasing today is The Future of Taste, and it talks about uh, foods that can help us sustain the uh, in a climate risk world. So um, let me first invite uh, TSC's Director General, Ms. Sumita Narayan, uh, who would talk about the links between food and climate change. Thank you. Don't go. Don't go, don't, don't go, don't go. I want to thank Vibha in particular because this entire series of books has been curated by her. And it is Vibha and the team at CSE, because we tend to do everything uh, where low cost people. So uh, all the food Vibha sourced, she has personally cooked it so she can tell you every recipe works. And it has been photographed by Vikas, who's right here. Vikas, please come here. Okay. And it has been designed by Ajit, who is somewhere, somewhere around. Ajit, Ajit is here. So just to tell you that this is a series of publications that we are very excited by. And the reason we are excited about these is because for us, we look at food as something that is linked to the issue of nutrition, to the issue of livelihood and to the issue of nature. As many of you know, CSE's work on food actually began with looking at toxins in food. We started with looking at the whole issue of pesticides in food. And the reason for us was that we really believe that if we have to grow food which is good for us, we have to make sure that the chemicalization of our food, the industrialization of our food can be stopped. But as we worked on those series and the, that research, we really found, and a lot of people came to us saying, you talk about what is bad, but what is good? Tell us what is good. And in 2013, Vibha put together the first series, and I really want to thank Manish. You were there on the 2013 launch, and we basically were able to bring the whole idea that this food which is diverse, can be celebrated on our plates. And for us at CSE, the connection between nature and food is very clear. We talk about cultural diversity of India, but we never understand that the cuisine, cultural diversity of India is actually intrinsically linked to the biological diversity of this country. And if we don't celebrate the biodiversity on our plate, we will never be able to protect it in the wild. So the connection between nature and food becomes very critical. But this book today, and that's what I really wanted to spend a few minutes talking about it, is really taking the conversation to one of the biggest existential issues that we deal with today, climate change. We know that the threat of climate change is real. We know that it is urgent. We know that extreme weather events are today breaking the back of our farmers. We at CSC document extreme weather events, and we have really come out with a figure which is scary, which is one extreme weather event a day, a day in India. Now, on one hand, we have farmers being affected because of climate change, and they need risk mitigation strategies. 
On the other hand, we have the whole issue of food adding to the emissions which lead to climate change. And we know that 10% of the emissions are from food. Green. Survival emissions and luxury emissions. And this is why the industrial food farming systems which add to the stock of greenhouse gases in the air become the issue that we must link with. But simultaneously, we must link with the idea of what is resilient food. What is that food which is good for farmer, which is good for nutrition and good for the environment? The incredible work the government has done to popularize, to talk about millet. Millet today is, the reason we need millets is because it is a water prudent crop. It is a heat tolerant crop. And it is good for us in terms of nutrition. Those are the kind of things that Vibha has curated in this book. She has gone way beyond millets. She has looked at all food from different regions of the country, which are biodiverse and which are resilient. These are leaves, these are tubers, these are fruit, these are flowers, and these are cereals. And this is really the wealth of knowledge because at the, the end of this is that food is about knowledge. The rock stars that we have in front of you are so critical because food is about taste, but food is also about knowledge and about making the link between knowledge and what we ate, why we ate it, and where it grew. And that knowledge needs to be something that we bring back on our tables. And I am really excited by this work because I see a change. I see that when we began, the word makhana was not known. And for us, makhana was important because makhana was a crop that is grown on wetlands of India. So for us, makhana was a crop that if you eat makhana, the ponds of India will get protected. That was the link for us. Today, it is part of our cuisines. And so I think the more we talk about this, the more we celebrate it, the more we really understand how we can bring this food on our tables, we look at the link between nature, nutrition, and of course, livelihood. So thank you again for coming and joining us today. We are really excited by this. CSC is a very boring organization. We always do work on sewage and shit and excreta and garbage and all the rest of it. This is the one time when we can really celebrate with friends. So thank you so much for coming. And thank you to all these wonderful chefs for joining us because this they make today possible. Thank you. Thank you, Sunita Ji, for setting the stage for this very unique culinary experience that you are about to see. Uh, the knowledge about, as Sunita Ji said, the knowledge about the ingredients and how they can be used is nearly lost. So we have invited our chef who would show us how these ingredients can be used into uh, different recipes. But first, I would like to invite all the guests on the dais to come and release the book.
we will wait for ah. <laughs> okay thank you chefs for uh, releasing the books and we will start now with uh, chef malhotra uh, rajiv malhotra who is the corporate chef of habitat world and chef tell us what you are going to prepare hello hi hello ha today i am going to make kodo millet paaya it's a spanish dish and normally people make it with the non vegetarian but i have tried it with the vegetarian thing because <laughs> this is uh, this may be very famous in india in some time because people love to eat these things i have tried to make it as simple as possible so these are all ingredients like chop onion chop garlic this is the soaked kodo millet it takes around 2 hours to soak it some broccoli peppers green peas beans some saffron spanish lemon and all these are ingredients this is the paprika which is very important for this i have some stock in that so going to start this first start with the oil it's olive oil add some onion जी आई एम मेकिंग कोडो मिलेट पाया सो पाया बेसिकली दे पीपल यूज अरबोरियो राइस इन दिस बट आई हैव यूज कोडो मिलेट इट्स अ काइंड ऑफ बाजरा बेसिकली फर्स्ट यू हैव टू सॉर्ट ए सम आनियन नाउ एड सम गार्लिक क्रेट So we were just, uh, you know, before we started, is it working? Can somebody get us to work, please? I've got it. Okay. So we were just discussing, you know, Rajiv, the whole idea with millet. One of the biggest problems we are having with millets is that there is only one generic name for millets, but the diversity in India is huge. and we really need to understand this is what we were discussing with manish and we were discussing together we need to understand the family of millets better and i was also explaining how language is so important so there is an amazing scientist pushpangadan and he taught me a lot of this that how language has changed so rajiv the word millet we use coarse millets with it and refined is seen as for refined people rice coarse is seen for coarse people then you have things like pigeon pea so language has been used very much to actually create a class structure of the food and what we are all trying to do is to change the class structure so that 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 food which was seen to be neglected food can now become food which is on our tables so rajiv the next thing that you have done i am adding all the vegetables to this
I think people want to see what the pan looks like. <laughs> <laughs> we should have had as as our high tech friend is telling us a drone over here. Adding some salt into it. Some paprika, which is again very important ingredient for this. Paprika. I have it as tomato. Now add tomatoes to this. So the other thing is that all the food that we are cooking here, uh, we will have a tea at the back. Vibha will explain that to you. And uh, samples of this food will be available at the back. So I hope you will, I hope that's tempting enough for all of you to stay. <laughs> some black pepper, some saffron. Uh, Chef, why did you think about kodo millet instead of rice? Look, because I want to use something else, else like uh, don't want to use rice or arborio rice or something Spanish. So I want to make like for Indian people, which and it is easy to make them also. So koto millet is a one of the small grain millets and it's easier to cook than rice. Now I am adding this soaked koto millet to him. One of the questions that the chefs were asking is, you have sourced all these ingredients from different parts of the country. How can we make sure that these ingredients are available? I mean, kodo is available. The vegetables that Rajiv is cooking with is available. But many of the other things that you have cooked with, is there any way that they can you can provide a guidebook of such materials at where you got it from so that people can source it? That's a very, very difficult thing to do. But however, uh, what we have seen is that in case of millets earlier, it was totally totally impossible to actually access the small grain millet. And or what we would get in the market was only jwar and bajra. But now, because the popularity is so much and the government has also promoted it, that it is now available online and even in markets. Like you can go to any market near your house and the... Uh, uh, grocery shop would have at least some of the millets like ragi is now very easily available so uh, I, I am about, excuse me i am adding some ah. stock to it which i have already prepared it's a vegetable stock with some saffron i have chosen all these vegetable which are easily available all these things are easily available in the market. And in our restaurant at Un, we have a special menu for millets. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. And I heard that you have made all your bread uh, right yes. now. Yes, to today bread. all the breads with jwar atta, huh. multigrain bread, and uh, one more bread. Okay. Uh, it's a sourdough bread. Uh -huh. So made all sandwiches with that only. Okay, nice. So clearly, the effort has to bring to be to bring this on our tables on as normal and something which tastes good. Because at the end of the day, when children want to eat Maggie noodles, they go for Maggie noodles because of the taste of it. And that's why these chefs are so important, because they will turn this food into food which is uh, tasty, which people will aspire to eat. And that's important. We can't see this food as something that you eat only for health reasons, because then children will never eat it. People will never want it on their table. So it has to be part of our cuisines. Rajiv, done? No, it will take few minutes. Let okay. it become dry. It, it's a totally dry dish. Huh. And this is a pie dish huh. in which we will serve this. Some of 
asking uh, where to source these materials. So these things are available in local markets, as I said. Um, and it also depends on the de uh, demand for these ingredients. For example, the place that I live uh, is near uh, Chitranjan Park, which is, has people from West Bengal and Bangladesh. So they have their own unique demands and the shopkeepers there bring it from Bangladesh or West Bengal to actually uh, provide to the people who want it. So it's all a question of demand, which is what we have put in the book also that once there is demand, the people would grow it and people would also supply it. Nowadays, all the ingredients are available on Zomato, at INA, wherever you go, everything is available now. Now we have to learn to cook it well. That's the main thing. We have to learn to enjoy it. And we have to learn to understand the reason why we are eating it, Rajiv. This is why the whole idea that millets is a water prudent crop. That you, you grew you can millets make it in with region. Any millet, yeah. any millet, or with any rice, whatever you have at home. You can make it with the white rice, brown rice, any millet. I mean, with climate change, we're going to see more and more extreme rain events. You're also going to see more variable rain events. You're going to see more droughts, more water scarcity. And so we have to get better in the management of water. But we also have to learn to celebrate the food, which actually the crops that grew without water. And that really is something, the difference between the introduction of rice. I mean, rice is a very important crop. Very important for Kerala, maybe not so important for Punjab, where you're using irrigated water for it. So I think the whole idea of changing agriculture will also start with changing our cuisines and celebrating the food that we need to eat. This is really why this entire work that uh, we are doing with the chefs is so important. Now this is almost ready. I am going to dish it out. olives and this lemon it's a Spanish lemon so this is the main dish see that color and all the vegetables are colors are in red. So I have tasted it and it tastes beautiful, wonderful. <laughs> so Viva came on Monday and everything was cooked and tasted. So what you're eating today has gone through a whole level of checking. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Ask Manjit. Ask Manish. You ask. Okay, so now I in, uh, invite Chef uh, Manish Mehrotra to come on the stage. And he is the culinary director of uh, Indian Accent, which is a, is a restaurant in uh, the Lodi. And the welcome My chef. Cooking. And the uh, is known not only in India, but Manish, also in Manish is a the world. superstar. <laughs> so is your mic working? Mic Can everybody hear me? Yeah, I think it's working. Wonderful. Chef made such a nice pie. Yeah? I I'll 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 make some chutney for it. <laughs> so why I chose chutney because chutney is one such thing. Koi bhi ingredient samajh nahi aa raha ho, do cheeze uski zaru ban sakti hai chutney ya bharta. So if you are not understanding, what kind of wine? If you don't understand wine, which wine to go for? Go for champagne or a sparkling wine. It will go with every Indian food. So that is why chutney or bharta you make out of anything, sab cheezo ka banega. And ma'am was saying that water sustainable kind of cheese, the whole ingredient, so just a millet, hai, waisi hamari Bihar mein aur pure Hindustan mein ek cheez hoti hai, that is elephant yam. Jimmy Khan Bihar mein ol bolte hain. What a cool name, ol. Now everybody knows ola. I don't know ola comes from. It came from ol actually. So... 
such a diverse, such a unique vegetable or a tuber, I would say, that you can make n number of things. Drought ka samay ho, to Mother India mein aap dekhenge, Nargis Dad ji usko khod ke jameen se nikal ke apne bachchon ko khila rahi hain, ya um, Bawarchi picture mein Rajesh Khanna uske kebab bana ke khila rahe hain kisi ko. So all is such a diverse thing. So I've taken some boiled elephant yam, Jimmy Kant, usko khali boil kar liya hai. I'm just going to mash it. And this will work as a wonderful sandwich spread. It will work as a excellent burger ka topping. It will work as a all on toast, not <laughs> avocado on toast. So it can work very well, all on toast. Um, full of a lot of good things in it. Or market may easily available here. You can have a grams of lake, five kilo to curry sakte. There's no, I think, give it, we'll cut a piece of give it to you. Just I've this is some boiled elephant yam. I've just mashed it. That's it. Mustard oil, raw mustard oil. So yellow or black? No, no. This rye or sarso ka mix wala tail hai. Mix wala tail hai. Cold press. Cold press. Cold press. Mustard oil. Thoda sa sarso ka tail. It will give a nice kick, and you'll forget Dijon mustard or any mustard from anywhere in the world. This is the pure thing. mustard oil dala iske andar mein chara sa salt salt you according to your taste whatever you need lemon juice lots of lime juice so that Oh, you see, chop adrak if you want. Oh, you see, green chilies. Bit of coriander. And a pinch of chaat masala. Taste it a little bit. Perfect. So nice and mustardy, creamy, gluten free, vegan, <laughs> whatever you want. But, but <laughs> These are the things which are which are like. <laughs> if you explain all this jargon, let me ask Vibha, what is Jimmy Kand all about? Tell us a little bit about the tuber and the importance of these tubers. So the wonderful part about Jibikand is that it grows underground. Whenever the conditions are good, it will grow. And even if the leaves go away, they will sprout new leaves whenever the uh, conditions become better again, when there's water available. So it's a kind of a survival food which will survive along with you, which is why I think Chef talked about Mother India, uh, it being used in Mother India. <laughs> um, so it's a very strong, hardy, and you know it survives. It's a survival food. People. So it's important, uh, Manish, that we are bringing survival food on our tables. Really, now we require, we see a condition everywhere. Absolutely. We, we really, Absolutely. we really need. Absolutely. Ab isko, I am doing little bit of a Bihar, hai, old, hai, Sattu kaise nahi aayega. It has to be. So Sattu, pa, Sattu is again one such thing 
it is better than any protein shake you get it in the market. Summers are coming, get a sattu, put one spoon of sattu in the water in the morning, have it, it is better than any protein shake you, you can think of. Little bit of sattu roti. So, ye ban gaya mera 25 rupees me ol ki chutney, 10 rupees ka sattu paratha. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> now I'm going to sell it for 1200 rupees. So, now some black and white rice puffed with. It's some organic peanuts. <laughs> some some chopped cherry tomatoes. Now this has become 900. <laughs> and now I'm going to put some nice buraj flowers. So Ooh. now this is 100, 200. <laughs> And now it has become a twelve hundred rupees. Please show it to everybody how that dish. <laughs> so, before again, sattu. Tell us what I mean. You know, for most non-Biharis, sattu does not make sense at all. So you have to tell us what is sattu. Sattu is a chane ka aata, but it's a different kind of a chana where we take chana. It's a small size chana with a black skin on top and it is ground along with the skin. So it's very, 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 very healthy. And uh, the best part is when you eat it little, it absorbs so much of water that it retains a lot of water in your stomach and you don't feel hungry for a long time. And it's very high in protein. And uh, again, very versatile. You can use it from stuffing of a paratha or you can make a um, halwa out of it you can just make a shake out of it so you can use it in variety of ways you see how important is what we are saying so it's a it's chickpea which means that you're really talking about lentil now lentil is a crop which is so important for the soil because it fixes nitrogen in the soil it's also a source of protein it's also, as you're explaining, I mean, today we have now become better at this to understand that the word refined is actually not so good for us. That what was not refined is perhaps better for us than, I mean, I keep, I'm very interested in this whole way that we have changed language of food. True. That food became, what is refined? What is double refined? And I grew up in a generation where all this food was coming in. And it became something that you wanted double refined uh, uh, oil because it was better than cold pressed ghanni ka. Uh, but now we are understanding how much of the nutrition we lost in it. I mean, we just did a cover story which was really fascinating that how rice and wheat, two crops that we have grown and eaten over so many ages, that they have lost so much of their nutritive value. And this is really why when Vibha wrote her piece on millets, she's also saying that this whole idea that we should improve the productivity of millets and bring in high yielding millets, we need to understand that often there's an inverse relationship between nutrition and productivity. And the genes we select are genes that we select for the wrong reasons. And so we need to understand why, in some senses, Bihar, the word sattu was really about survival. And it was food that was good for the environment and good for humans. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You so thank much. you so much. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, Chef, for sharing your very simple recipe of the 1200 rupees sattu paratha. Now, I think every one of us can make it at home. <laughs> <laughs> but then what will happen to your restaurant? That's fine. One dish I can I can I can compromise. No you problem. can compromise. <laughs> Good. Okay. Thank you again. Uh, I now invite Chef Jatin Malik, uh, who is the co-owner of uh, uh, Tres Restaurant in uh, Lodi Colony, and he's going to prepare a summer loaf with billets.
Is it audible. working, Jatin? Am I audible? Yeah, it is. Yes. All right. Okay. So what I'm going to make today is I'm going to make a summer vegetable and uh, jowar I'm using. Uh, I'm going to make a bake, but I'm going to just innovate a bake and make it a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to make a low part of it. So uh, the vegetable I'm using, are, I've got peppers, I've got carrots, I've got some water chestnut, I'm using some sun-dried tomatoes, I've got some spring onion scallions. Actually, you can use any vegetables what you have, depends on what sort of, uh, you can use peas, you can use beans, you can use mushrooms, what vegetables you like, sort of balance you want to do in your dish. So it's a pretty fairly easy, simple recipe. It's not too complicated, it's not too fussy. It's just that you need to, like everybody loves a bake, so sometimes you want to make a bake a little interesting and you want to give your little take to it. So I've just uh, given a take on it and made it interesting. Also, one more prep you need to do for it is like whenever we make a bake, we have a white sauce as a creamy base. Or if you don't have a white sauce, then you can use any sort of a, a mascarpone cheese or a plain cream as a base. But I've made some white sauce here. So, so how do you begin this? So we're going to start with... I'm going to take some butter and a little bit of olive oil. That's just to make sure the butter doesn't smoke. Well, it just acts as a balancing act. And yeah, then we have our onions. Saute some, saute the onions, let the onions get a little translucent. You don't need to brown them or you can just make it little, uh, leave them a little crunchy, let it be a little translucent. Add all your vegetables. I'm adding, so uh, if you follow the recipe on the book, it's got the proportion. So I've measured it to the proportion. So I yes. don't know the recipe. Justin, by... Thank you for telling us this. Let me tell everybody, please buy a copy of the book. Okay, that's yeah, compulsory so, for everyone who's come here. Yeah, yeah. Because you, wanna... you have to take the recipe, the original, the proper recipe from the book. Yeah, you and... go back and you try it and yeah. it will come out, you wonder, like, what happened? Yeah, what did you do, man? Yeah, it. No, no, so, so, the recipe is... Yeah, so recipe is all tried. <laughs> it's tried and tested. It's all the quantities are measured in it. So I'm sorting the peppers. I'm adding carrots. These carrots are all grated. I have some water chestnut. I've added so cut water, to water chestnut, chestnut. Jatin, was another thing that we wrote about in the first book. Hmm. And Manish will remember that, that that was also something water chestnut we talked about. Because again, for us, we're looking for connections. Okay, Why is water chestnut so important? Because of the lakes. I mean, CSE's entire work, for most of you who know us, is really about water harvesting. It's about ponds, it's about lakes, it's about rainwater, it's about waste management. And so for us, how do you make sure that the lakes and the ponds of India have a value? So they have a value from the point of view of water, but they also have a value from the point of view of food. And that's why water chestnuts become so important as well. Okay. All okay? Yeah, I'm back. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So now what do you so, put? So I'm just uh, taking some jar. I've actually pre-cooked it. So I mashed it a bit to give Could it a body. Tell everybody a little bit about how you did the jar. So I just uh, soaked it for 35, 40 minutes. Then I pressure cooked it with a little bit of salt and pepper. Gave it just two whistles and it was ready. Okay. And then I just mashed it. So jowar is where it is actually going to give it a body. It's going to give it that flavor. It's going to give that little bite which you, you know, which you want to have, which is that mystery element. Then I have some white sauce which I've already made. So I'm just going to add the white sauce, which is going to act as a binder. For flavorings, I'm adding sun-dried tomatoes. You can add anything: sun-dried tomatoes, jalapenos, olives, capers, gherkins, whatever you wish to. Enjoy what you want to add. You want to make it spicy, less spicy, more spicy. Add any of those. Adding a bit of spring onions. Then I'm adding a mix of herbs. I've got some parsley and basil. And most important, salt. 
pepper and I've used a little bit of nutmeg for it. So I'm gonna season it and flavor it with nutmeg. Okay. You don't need to use a frying pan for it. You can use a little deep uh, handi or a, uh, a little sort of saucepan for it so that whole thing gets mixed up nice. So, Johar again is another millet. Yes. yes. It's one ah. of the big grain millets. So, there are two types of millets, big grain ones and the small grain ones. The big grain ones that are being popularized at the moment are Johar, Bajra and Ragi. The other six are small grain with the smallest being the little millet, which is the kutki. And uh, chef has used foxtail millet in the book. Yeah. Yeah. So don't get perplexed when you see uh, foxtail millet there. So we can add equal, equal yes, amounts. Yes, you can add equal amounts okay. of that. But again, you know, for me, again, the whole thing about demystifying all this, it has to become part of our cuisine. For that, we must start understanding each millet. We understand arbo rice, but we still don't understand the difference between a ragi and a jwar. And I think it's very important for us to bring this food into not just our tables, but also to understand it better. Exactly. Everyone thinks it's rice. Like whenever you even buy it online, it says bajra rice. So it's very confusing for people. So I think that understanding that there are differences in uh, the uh, the millets that are available in India, and we have a huge variety of millets in India. Like some are not even, uh, some are unknown. In the third book that we uh, did on business of taste, there was a millet that uh, the millet woman in India uh, from Chhattisgarh, uh, she had popularized. That was a grass, a very very small grain millet, and uh, it you could don't even have to cook it. You just put it in warm water and it's ready to eat. Wow. So these, wow. that's the variety that we have. Wow, I that's guess. biodiversity. So, so this rest, now when everything is mixed and nicely sort of homogenized into one mixture, you need to put it, set it aside, let it stand for 15, 20 minutes and let it cool down. So the whole process, uh, why uh, it has to cool down, then we drop in an egg into it. Ah. So I'm not going to do that process now here. I've already made one loaf for you. So once the egg is ready, mixed into it, you put in a baking tin. If you have an oven at home, you can put it in an oven at 160 degrees for like 35 to 40 minutes. Bake it in the oven. When it comes out of the oven, just press the whole thing, let it cool down, and you have a loaf ready. So I made this loaf for you. Since we're in the chef, Manish has set the process up and saying that, you know, you need to make a 50 rupee dish into a 2,000 rupee dish. <laughs> Attempt on it. You know, let's play, man. You know. Absolutely. Okay, so that is the business of food. So, so I baked it in this loaf, uh, this uh, bread tin, and it sort of, uh, I baked it this morning. After baking, I just let it cool down and put some weight on it, and here we are. This loaf is ready like a bread loaf. So I'm going to cut it. You need a plate? Yeah. I'm going to serve it on the plate. Then as usual, making a little fancy, going Chef Manish's way. Like a little mayo base, and uh, make roasted the onions, given a smoky flavor, seasoned it with a little paprika and little herbs. Yeah, so-called Chef's chutney, make it a little interesting. <laughs> yeah, so there we go. And I've also, again, taken the same jars and I've sort of made it into popcorns. I've popped it, and I made it into a popcorn. So I'm just going to top the loaf with it, give it a little crunch, a little that nuttiness, that little flavor. Chef, it's just 500 rupees short, so I'm going to take some flowers. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And uh, there are these vegetable and lint, uh, millet loaf. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. So this looks really, yeah, really wonderful, try. and yeah, yeah. I think we should taste it when yes, yes, uh, yes when we yes. go for our snacks. Yes. Thank you, Chef. Do you see a lot of customers asking for millet-based recipes at your place? There, there is an awareness of it. There is a conscious awareness, is, and I think uh, we also, as uh, chefs, are sort of introducing it on our menus. Every now and then, we have a dish or two which is with millet. We 
we now make uh, cookies out of it so which is like with our tea coffee with the cookies we serve we don't use any flour we use just ragi flour and so that it that everybody can consume it and everybody can have it that's think, the yeah. knowledge that we were talking about the knowledge of how to consume all these millets yeah. so thank you chef thank you and, thank you uh, now our last guest chef manjeet gill and i uh, he ha uh, he was a former uh, uh, corporate chef at itc chef manjeet gill i think everybody knows everyone him knows needs him. no introduction techniques <laughs> of uh, historical background aapka mic kaam kar raha hai ki nahi that is more important you can have it yeah ha bilkul so let's see what chef is going to prepare because even i don't know <laughs> yeah chef has been traveling and we don't know and of course he when he came माइंड <laughs> not uh, no doubt books are very important to buy and to have the guidelines from that <laughs> thank you very important <laughs> but the important is that you think what you according to your mood according to your mind according to eat so when you put all these factors together and what's available with you you will what is is they will tweak the recipes you change the recipe. Uh, today i'm showing you uh, you know sustainability is a very very big issue and uh, i can tell you that you all can contribute into sustainability and for the environment and you can contribute doing what you do every day you need not to take out any extra time or any extra money to spend to do that for sustainability please do and you can do three times a day and that is just by choosing the right food be careful think about when you choose the food and you will see that your little effort like this how it will affect a cascade effect backward till the where the crops are grown and the it will help in the environment so please choose the right food that's very very important and definitely to choose the right food you needs little knowledge also and understanding of foods uh to bana kya raha hai chef please bana de bana bataiye na bana kya raha hai i like to talk on food more than baking we'll make it somehow if we have little time <laughs> is something that i have to also see yeah <laughs> so i'm just i'm not giving you any recipe i'm giving you a concept i'm giving you a thought that's what i try to do mm -hmm. so that you create the thing what you want to do it so i'm trying to use uh, what i tried is a very traditional kind of a uh of the preparation which is mostly into the tribals like for me the most uh, favorite YouTube channels of food are the tribal foods from all over the world. I don't see the modern because there's a lot of inspiration you get because they work with the no doubt they work on sustainability and environment because that's the only way they know that's the only way to produce food for their own. So there's a great inspiration you get from them. So this recipe is uh, from that way only. It is mostly in the Chhattisgarh and all that. This is very popular over there. It's a leftover rice that you eat. Rice, there's a leftover rice always, mm -hmm. and uh, you use it next day. So you don't, you should don't waste anything. And otherwise, also, if you leave the rice with little water, add little water overnight. It has a great, uh, you no know, ingredient for probiotic. And we now these days everybody know about probiotic. We keep mm -hmm. talking about. you know so it's a very good probiotic food you can prepare mm. good for your gut health so it's very important i 
So these are leftover rice, and uh, you put it in water, leave it overnight, and next day either match it up with your hands, is it will be more tastier and better. <laughs> because the warmth of the hands will make the effect. It will make it more fermented. Will happen. Or you can do it in a blender or a mixer. That's crush time. Now to create, uh, to create the little variation or a little more variety when you have the time, you can think. So I change the color with little beetroot. In this, normally, so traditionally the they do it. That is your rice that you have put beetroot in it. Yeah, yeah. I see. It's a it's the same rice. Add little beetroot. You know, make like a dough. And shape like this, nice. you know. Nice, real beetroot. And this is with the turmeric, haldi. You can do it, make it, create whatever you want to put it. You know, these are with the spinach, and these are natural, whatever the rice says. So you can create as many colors as you want, whatever you want, you can do that. So after shaping them, this is the same thing. Apply a little oil on your palms and shape it, and then they are. Uh, I blanch them a little bit to to carry here. Mm. Otherwise, you don't need to do it. You can straight do it on the pan. So we'll do the cooking. Mm. Ah. I'm going to slow it. So you, so uh, uh, Manjit, so in fact, Avipa, you have a whole section on, and you've always been telling us about fermented food. Yes, so it's very interesting to see about this how people can consume different kinds of fermented foods, and they are actually well, cooking is a, yeah. very good for health. Fermented food is very good. That's the best food for your gut. You need to make gut healthy because those bacteria sitting in the in the gut need also the food you to feed them. So when I grew up, we used to always get kanji in winter. Yeah. And it's only when I read Vibha's book that I realized how important that kanji was for my gut. So it's in season oh. now. I think I hope everyone will prepare it at home. Yeah. Kanji, black carrots are in season and so we'll we have just quickly carrots. we'll do the temple this and then we'll do ah. the we'll talk. <laughs> Many bilkul. Because cooking cannot wait. You know, once you <laughs> put the pan on the heat, it's heating up now. So you have to be careful. What oil Mustard have oil. you used? Mustard oil. Mustard oil. You can use any oil you want, but not the refined oil. And not canola and all that also. So I'm putting this in methi dana. Jeera. And mustard seeds. And always start cooking on a low temperature. But if you let it heat along with the spices, you know, that's what I like to do. Because otherwise, it is very difficult. If you put the pan on top, put the oil, and start looking for other things, you have no idea how much it has heat up. So as you put the spice, it burns. So is it burnt? No flavor, no aroma. And they make the, uh, create a bad taste for the dish. So one thing more I'll show you, which I have, which is in the, my book also. I use the Uh, pomegranate and anarka juice. What you can do with anarka juice, you can reduce it on a low heat. It becomes a great like molasses, very thick, very tasty, stringent, sour, sweet. You know, all those three, four tastes come with that. And you can use it wherever you want to use. You can make it from milkshake to the vegetable preparation, put it in the curd, and create a very nice and a very nice, pleasant color which comes out of it. So I'm just showing it very simple. You don't do anything. Just put the juice on a low heat, let it reduce. 
no spice, no sugar, no salt, you don't need anything. Well, these spices are done. I add a little garlic. Now, the ingredients you can choose, you can change, you know, don't, uh, because I believe in that, that the, uh, is just uh, following the recipe very slavishly, you will get a good dish, may not be, but a good cooking can create a good recipe. So, be free when you do it, so your cooking, don't do it into a mathematical exercise. <laughs> you know, gram is everything you enjoy it. Cooking will be much better. So when the spices are ready, we'll put little a few of them. Wonderful. You have spinach, you have beetroot, you have haldi, and you have the normal rice. Looks like a looks like a pasta dish. Wow. Much better. No, it's not like pasta. Pasta is like this, maybe. Pasta is like this. There's, well, there's put. Water. well put. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> To add water. Because they are a little bit cooked, so we need to cover and all the other you can cover it to give a little steam so they cook properly. This anar juice is, you know, I use in the book, in the one of the millet recipe which I've given, yes, I, I use the anar juice in that, reduced anar juice. Actually, you cooked it, right? Yes. So, uh, Manjiji, we just had a very major meeting in our campus, mm -hmm. and we served these 80-odd journalists, media people that we had at the meeting. Uh, we served from the book different okay. food, and one of them was this. And oh, it was you. such a hit. It was such a hit. You have to try this. I mean, this anar juice in the uh, with the millet. Yes, putki. He uh, we did it with little millet. Again, it was very. It was with everything, you know, yeah. it, with the reduction, the taste becomes so very so tasty and a complex taste. You know, it is sweet, it's sour, it has astringent, which is very important taste we must have in our. But Manjiji, you know, for us again, sorry, we keep going back yeah, to please, our please. biodiversity. So the whole issue about horticulture, mm -hmm. the whole issue about pomegranate. I mean, pomegranate is a fruit which is so versatile and so it's available across different regions of India. It can be grown with very little water, okay? And it has nutrition and it provides livelihood and income to farmers. So if we can really talk about the fruit biodiversity and bring fruit biodiversity on our table, you're also talking about regrowing trees. It's agro, I mean, Indian farming is about agro silvo pastoral systems. So we do agriculture with pastoral and with trees. So trees are very important you see the because- fruits, uh, I'll tell you, I. The like she saying our traditional practices are very environmental friendly. You, uh, it is written in our manuscripts very clearly, and which made me think something else also. I'll just check with you. That food is only if it is friendly environment. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not food. Very simple, straight statement. Absolutely. If it is in harmony with the environment, a friendly environment, it helps the environment clean. Then it's food. Otherwise, it's not food. 
a hundred things, a thousand things are growing all around. All are not food. And that uh, made me think also one term which very loosely used now mm. everywhere and everybody that we must have healthy food. I didn't understand what does it mean. What does it mean, healthy food? Food is healthy. If you don't know the you don't have the skills and the knowledge and the process of how to cook it, make it and you don't know how to hold it, how to store it, how to handle them in their way, then you make it unhealthy. Food is not unhealthy. You know, it's also about the way we grow food. Of because course. Because at the end of the day, we have now started growing food as if it was a factory farm as if we were manufacturing the food. And I think this is where the link with climate change becomes so important, uh, Chef Gil, because we need to bring back the food, as you're saying, the healthy food, which is good for the environment and no, no. good for our health. You see, the growing food is also handling food, handling yes. the seeds. Absolutely. So they have to be, it is like uh, very simple. Uh, the you all must have heard about slow food. It's a very simple definition of that. Uh, good, clean, fair food for all. Now, good means good for us, good for farmer, good for environment, good for everything. Good for the people who trade, good for the people who cook, good for the people who eat. Same with the fair and clean food. So everything, that's why I say choose the right food. Everything starts from the soil. Beautiful. Everything starts from the soil. And only by choosing the right food, you'll be able to help into the environment. So cooking is a very, very important to do the good practices for this. So we'll cook it till the moisture is almost evaporated. No. And we'll add the green chilies. You want to add, you add, you want to add red chili, you add red chili, whatever. And a little salt. It's been reduced. This reduced, yeah. yeah. And this can be made and even keep it in the fridge. Use it when you want it. It's not every time you have to make it fresh. What is it missing? Nani, yeah, let me, let me, is uh, it missing something? Aap isko aise dekh raise ki... Nani, 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 nothing is missing. <laughs> <laughs> He's just see, trying to improve. Your mind working. If I'll get something, I might put it. <laughs> so... hey, for me, uh, for us, you know, for Vidha, for us at CSC, all this is really the celebration to bring the diversity, as I keep saying on our plates. I mean, look at what you've done. You've basically taken rice, but a rice that is grown. Leftover rice. Leftover rice. Mm -hmm. So Could again, consume, we yeah. talk about food waste being one of the biggest problems with climate change. In fact, they say that food waste, I mean, in India, traditionally, we have never wasted food. We've eaten the peels, we've eaten the shell, we've eaten food and cooked, recooked it. But today, what you're showing is how much we can you know, celebrate the whole knowledge of frugality, where we always reused our food, but we now feel that we And now what you're saying is you've taken cooked rice, old rice, and you've made, I think, a dish that you must hold it up and show everyone, because it's just incredible. Maybe over there, yes. ah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and... And 
again using beetroot and you know when no. the water is evaporated huh. let them still get little you know brown from the down you know little different texture will on top they are a little softer base they will little crisper so create textures you know it is very important you know the uh, in our uh, gastronomy when i say our means indian gastronomy mm. uh, the textures are defined very differently they are not soft hard Hard or semi-soft like that. Yeah. Texture to masticate the food. There's a texture to swallow the food. There's, a, there's different ways you consume the food. There's a drinkable food. There's a lickable food. Like Manish was telling you about chutneys. Yeah. There's a lickable food. There's a suckable food. So you must experience all these ways to consume food in one meal. That's the combination. That's why you know the you get the you know satisfaction when you eat because every, the whole system has satisfied with the food they got. Is ready? Well. <laughs> Smell the oil. Mm. Wow. Wow. You can have it. You can, if you want, you can have it. Tempering of curry, curry patta on top. Or what do you want to do? You can put even uh, ginger julians if you want. Ginger, ginger on top is all in your mind. Whatever you want to do it, do it. Be free. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Vibha, before you thank everyone, let me just, you know, again restate why all of your presence is so important today. Because you define cuisine. You define the culture of food, the taste of food. And that is why having all four of you here, we're really privileged. Thank you so much for joining us today. Really grateful. Thank you. Vibha, okay. floor is yours. Thank you, chefs. Once again, I will reiterate. Thank you for joining us. And uh, what I would like to say is that if you see there's a common commonality amongst all the ingredients that the chefs use. They are biodiverse. They are locally sourced. They are also drought resistant. Some are seeds, which are, again, can be stored for a very long time. They are foods which uh, have short life cycles, so they can be harvested very quickly. They can grow in flood. Some of the rice varieties can grow in flooded, flooded areas. So the first, we have a versatile uh, flat, uh, palette with us. We have to know how to use that. So I will ask Sukanya to put our uh, menu on the, the board. So uh, join us for snacks. And we have used a lot of the ingredients that are uh, that have been talked about in the book. We would request you once again to buy the book and uh, you can buy it from the sales counter, which is on my left. And you can, uh, yes, yes. So this is the menu, our menu, which uh, Chef Malotra has created very generously for us. So we have used a variety of millets amongst these. Uh, we have a millet tikki, we have vada, which has a very unique ingredient, which is a tamarind seed atta, which is which nobody would actually think about consuming, but it has been used for ages and ages by communities across India in Karnataka, Tamil Nadu. So we have vadas uh, created with those, along with urad dal. They, they are just mixed and uh, used. We have a sandwich in which the, uh, the filling is of chow chow. Chow chow is a chayote food which tastes like cucumber so it can actually replace cucumber in your recipes and it is very crunchy and it's a very nice uh, the bread is millet bread we have pakoras which are made from bathua leaves bathua is a wheat which is generally thrown out of wheat uh, fields but in season it can be consumed very easily into uh, uh, into pakoras and actually it's a very um, Favorite, favorite food in winters and lots of people create um, uh, bathua parathas and bathua raita with it uh, in winters. 
a bruschetta that is made from uh, bread created from a millet and uh, it has a topping of uh, tofu which is again a seed uh, soya bean which is made from soya bean and it's a, considered to be a very nutritious food we have hummus which is uh, uh, made from uh, chickpea and we have uh, flavored flavored it with beetroot and we have flavored it with different kind of ingredients and you can actually change the taste as you like uh, as you prefer and we have an amrut chutney which is uh, amrut is grows a drought resistant tree and as trees can grow in any conditions they don't die with every seasonal change so these are very good foods to have in your uh, menu so we have a chutney for uh, with that ketha is a is a fruit that is uh, again a tree borne fruit and it is like a bail but it's really sour and it can be it, it's a very good uh, replacement for tomatoes and which is has taken over the market in uh, for sour food so it's a very versatile again it can be used and very rarely are available unfortunately so i hope everyone will now ask the vendors to give it to them so they know that there's a market for this and we have uh, kheer that is being uh, prepared from millet and they have uh, samak rice is a millet it's a millet so um, it is uh, flavored with gulab leaves and we have used sabja seeds which are again uh, these are tulsi seeds uh, basil seeds and they grow very easily and they are very nutritious and they absorb a lot of water so they are very uh, healthy also especially in summer uh, season we have a halwa that is prepared from sweet potato which does not need much uh, flavoring but in all our sweets we have used gur as a sweetener so again healthy highly nutritious and it has micronutrients that can actually uh, benefit you and in the beverages along with tea and coffee we have a ketha rasam which is again very very tasty so i hope you will all try it and the food is served on the the left uh, uh, side and um, the books are also being sold there thank you <laughs> <laughs> one final pitch for the books but thank you everyone for coming we are really delighted that you joined us thank you and i hope that this menu created by chef everyone will enjoy thank you